Okay, welcome back to part two of Spiritual Personalities. I'm Pastor Danny Akers with Victor Rock Praise and Worship Center. And if you're watching this on WFBN TV, we want to welcome you to the Faith Channel. Or you can also go to Victory Rock uh, YouTube channel, The Getaway, and watch every episode of what we're doing. We're going to jump right back into uh, uh, the second part of spiritual personalities. And what we're talking about today, this is, by the way, being, if you didn't catch the first one, this is being filmed live at Victor Rock uh, Praise and Worship Center, 1700 Fairview Road, Galleon, Ohio. We have service every Sunday at 11. If you're in the area, you can join in to see us and be with us. We've been having church today. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we were talking about spiritual personalities in part one, and we were talking about how that your life, according to Jesus, is compared to a city. And then uh, also Proverbs said you're, uh, you're like an a unwalled city. So we're comparing your life to a city in part one, and I'll just do a real quick review to catch you up, because what is happening is, is that in the, in the comparison to a city, every city has personalities. You know, one side of the city is different from the other side. Every city I've ever went to, people tell me it seems like there's always one bad section of a city that is not friendly, and the other sides can be. Why is this? Well, I don't think I explained this in part one about the, the actual cities, but it's because there are ruling spirits that set up over regions. And what happens is some big cities are so big, they may have more than one ruling spirit. So, you know, this is why the south side of the city could have a different spirit than the north side. So that's why certain crimes happen on one side and certain crimes happen on the other side because they have two ruling spirits. So those spirits, they get, they get spirits of like matter. So they go back. We was talking about how that, you know, uh, a self-pity spirit will go, uh, go get a loneliness spirit. And then it'll go back with the loneliness spirit and get a depression spirit. And eventually it'll get another spirits living in you to where it tries to lead you to suicide because it doesn't want you uh, to like yourself. I'm going to tell you, and I did a lesson on, you know, loving yourself. And I went through this uh, with the church here talking about how I went over to my neighbor's house one time when we lived in town, knocked on the door, tried to introduce myself after I bought a house. He had a chain on the door, peeked through the crack, said, what do you want? I said, I bought the house next door. I thought you might want to meet me. He said, if I want anything, I'll contact you. He shut the door. That man, for about four years, never spoke to me. But I went home, and I got along with God, and I was mad. And I asked the Lord, what is wrong with him? What's wrong with that man? What kind of neighborhood did I come to? I'm just, I'm just letting God have it. And you know what he said to me? He quoted a scripture to my spirit. You love your neighbor as yourself. And I'm like, ouch. God began to show me I didn't love myself. And when I learned to love myself, my wife said I took it too far. <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing. If you want to do a test to see if you love yourself, record your voice. This is what God showed me. God showed me this. Because when I would listen to myself preach, I'm like, oh, that's the worst voice I've ever heard. That sounds horrible. I, didn't even, I couldn't even listen to the content of the message because I couldn't stand my own voice. And the Lord said, this is proof that you don't love yourself. You don't like your own voice. So I would, when I would do counseling, I would set a recorder and, and on the table, and I would record people during counseling, and then after about five minutes of counseling, I'd play back their voice, and I would watch their response. If they said, turn that off, that sounds awful, I'd go, oh, we're dealing with, with uh, unloving spirit. 
Because see, when you have an unloving spirit toward yourself, you can't love yourself. I got delivered from an unloving spirit in a service in Thomaston, Georgia. And I'm going to tell you, it changed me. And Jean even talked about, I, she, I came back and she said, who are you and where's my pastor? She never did tell me if it was better, but I'm assuming that uh, Okay, I'm going to run through this again. There, there, you will respond. Every human being is designed to be loved and to receive emotional support. When you're a child, God designs you to be loved. When you're not loved as a child, it begins to develop something in you that is ungodly. I know, because you know, even though I do believe my parents loved me, there was no expression of love. You know, my dad never put his arm around me. He went to his grave and never said he loved me. Did my dad care? I'm sure he did. Because, but you know what? I didn't never hear it. So tell your kids that you love them. Tell your loved ones that you love them. You know, when I first got married, uh, my wife came from a family that expressed emotions. I come from a family that expressed no emotions. You know, I was saying in the first video how my dad told me to never cry. You know, he said, men don't cry. And, and, and it didn't matter how painful, whether it was a funeral, whether it was a whipping from him, whether it was a beating, my dad would knock me in the floor. Wasn't allowed to cry. If I showed any emotion, so I learned how to be hard. There was a hardness, but I didn't know that in that was in my aggressive personality, I was inviting spirits. And those spirits won't stop. You know, uh, spirits are never satisfied. They want company. So they'll go get other spirits of like matter because birds of the feather we talked about flock together. So, you know, you're not going to have the same spirit as a passive uh, uh, personality person. If you're aggressive, you know, you're going to have different spirits because you now if you have a passive responsive uh, person, you'll open the door to spirits of self-pity, depression, loneliness, despair, and suicide, okay? Which, you know, we know when you open the door to one principality and power, he's going to go get more principalities and powers. Now, the aggressive personality person is going to deal with anger. This was me. I got angry when I was a child. I didn't even know I was full of anger. I was full of hatred. I was full of rebellion. You know, they would take me to the offices and like, why do you fight all the time? Why do you have to do this? Why do you do that? I didn't know. I was a child. Somebody tell me. You know, I think if the principal probably would have just sat down and put his arm around me and said, you know what? We love you. We want the best for you. Instead of pulling that three foot paddle out and beating me every time because it just made me harder. Yeah. But anyway, then I went to rebellion. And the Bible says rebellion is as a spirit of witchcraft. I had spirits come inside of me, and I won't get into detail, but I'll just tell you this. I, I was, I, I, through, I believe, spirits, I could, there wasn't a lock I couldn't pick. I could start cars. See, once it begins to reveal things in you, spirits begin to work. This is, I had a criminal mind. By the time I was uh, uh, 17, 16, 17 years old, I was a, I was a, a, a criminal mind. This is why uh, the court systems, when I went to court with people to be a testimony of them changing through salvation, they say, once you're a criminal, you're always a criminal. Because they don't understand that there's forgiveness. They don't understand that God could make you a new creature and all sins could be wiped away. God could take all this negative personality of you in one second and make you a new person. Now, there'll be scars there, and there'll be thoughts there and things, but you're delivered. And, the, and we're going to get to that today uh, in a moment. But see, each time these demons influence you, then they bring in another demon. So the aggressive response goes from anger to hatred to rebellion to witchcraft to violence. And that's why our country is in the shape it's in today with all the violence, all the hatred, and all the things that's going on. Now, some of the characteristics that happens through these spirits being in you because now we're going to talk about the characteristics of spirits in your mind and in your body. Because this is what to look for, okay? Now, let me just say this. Every time some little something happens to you, it's not a demon, okay? I smashed my finger, okay? We don't have to get the smashed finger demon cast out today. It was an accident. 
things happen, okay? But there are principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that's influencing your life. They're around you, and once you learn to recognize them and take a stand against them, then you're going to learn that they will stop influencing your personality. And then you'll notice that your personality around certain people will change. Because this is why you see people who get into cliques, who people get into little groups, and why people, even some churches, you know, I had a pastor tell me one time, well, our church is only looking for a certain class of people. Now, you know how that worked out for him? It didn't. Because the doors are open to whosoever is seeking the Lord. We need to open those doors. It doesn't matter what you've been through and where you've been and what demon climbed up on you. We need to welcome you in. But the first thing we must do is love you. And I'll never forget the testimony of David Wilkerson when, he, when, when uh, the gang leader came in to rob the church and somebody come to David and, and he said, you know, uh, Nicky Cruz is here with his gang and they're about to rob the church. And so they said, you want us to call the police? And David said, no. He said, ushers, they're getting ready to take up the offering. He said, ushers, go sit down. He said, no, Mr. Cruz, will you and your gang members come up here? He gave them each a bucket, said, you guys are going to receive the offering. <laughs> they took up the offering, and Nicky came back to the altar and got on his knees and got saved because somebody showed him trust and love. It broke everything that it rejected inside of him. Now, when these characteristics of these begin to influence your mind, this is where doubt, unbelief, confusion, and indecision come from. See, if you're going through right now in your mind, if you're seeing just doubt, you know, some people can believe the word and believe their salvation for years, and some days they just get up, and all of a sudden you start doubting. Does, does the Lord really want me to do this? Uh, am I really supposed, you know, am I really saved? You know, we, that's, that's a characteristic of a spirit. So if you're doubting who you are in Christ, you might be dealing with the spirit. Unbelief. God calls you to do something. Well, I just, you know, I just don't believe I can do it. Listen, I'm a prime example of dealing with unbelief. I don't have a good education Throw out of high school. God calls me to pastor. You know, we build uh, a, a building after building here. Now we're in the third phase of 8,000 square foot, debt free. Uh, you know, I'm on TV. Lord help us. I mean, these are things that I never believed could happen to me. But see, you got to deal with that unbelief. Confusion. Have you ever seen people who are confused? Now we don't jump to the White House, but. But how about indecision? How about indecision? Have you seen people just can't make up their mind? It's like they're just, they're just well, they're, you know, they'll want to do this this day. They want to do that that day. You might be dealing because that's a characteristic of a demon. Now we're going to talk about the demon characteristics, because i got to hurry, that are going on in your body. We're going to go to Luke chapter 4, and we're going to read verses uh, 40 and 41. Luke chapter 4, verses 40 and 41. And the first thing that I noticed in this verse is it says, Now when the sun was setting, it was about to get dark. Jesus dealt with something when it was about to get dark. Listen, I'm not waiting till April of 2024 to start preaching and start preparing you for the darkness that's coming. We need to, it's starting to get dark. We're talking spiritually. It, you know, so when it started to get dark, it says when the sun was setting, all that had any sickness with uh, divers diseases brought them to him and he said he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Now, this is interesting because look at verse 41. And devils also came out of many crying and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Amen. You don't have to convince that spirit that's been bothering you, haunting you, tormenting you, because this is what spirits do. Their ultimate goal is to torment you in your life. They want your life to be miserable. They want you to be upset. They 
want you to live in misery. They just want to torment you physically, always in pain, always in sickness. Can't never look. Everybody's going to get some little cold. Somebody might have something wrong with them. There's laws of physics and the life that we live. We're in a falling world. So I'm not saying every ache and pain is a demon. But when somebody's just constantly dealing with sickness, there's something wrong. When somebody's, see, there's spirits that needs to be dealt with. And I want to talk to that because I want to try to hurry through what I'm about to say. Because you see, the demons came out with the sickness. So there may be what you're dealing with is the influence of a sickness in you that you need to be, it needs to be dealt with. And not everything is there. I, I said that a while ago. But Luke, uh, look at Luke 13, verse 11, okay? It says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. This is a place in the Bible where it absolutely identifies sickness with a spirit. So you think it's messed with your personality, now they're messing with your body. Because that's what they got to do is they got to come into your personality first and they get you to accept that. I used to say this when I had an unloving spirit and people would call me out on it. I had good Christian people that would call me out on my unloving spirit and I would look at them and say, that's just who I am. I probably said that thousands of times. That's just who I am. And one day, in my sincerity of seeking the Lord, God asked me a question. He said, Danny, what's the distance between who you are and who I want you to be? See, I had no answer, but it brought conviction. And I began to cry out, God, help me deal with these personalities. Help me deal with my personality because I don't want to be this. Because he, he says here that they were dumb and deaf spirits. They were spirits of blindness. They were spirits of muteness. So you can see that these things, listen, church, in the harvest of the last time, that when we're coming into the final days, we're going to see deliverance of these things. I believe this with all my heart that you are going to be used of God. You've got to recognize when you're dealing with a demon and when you're dealing with a person. You need to recognize, you need discernment that you're dealing with the spirit of infirmity, you're dealing with the spirit of dumbness, you're dealing with the spirit of weak. There, you need that discernment. And then if it needs to be something that just the person is in a situation where they need a miracle, then you can lay hands and declare the miracle. But if you're praying for a miracle when it's a spirit, nothing's going to happen and you're going to end up discouraged. But I believe that God is preparing us for the days that are coming ahead. Okay? So now, and what what is going to happen here, okay? Well, listen, death is also a spirit. I can prove it to you in the scripture. Death is a spirit. Now, in, in 2 Corinthians, I just want to show you something. 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 11, I want to read verses 3 and 4. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguile Eve through his stability, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if, if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Why does he mean another spirit? You mean a Christian could have another spirit? Absolutely. See, I don't, I'm not talking about uh, 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 possession here. I'm talking about you set under false teachings. You set under false doctrine. And it's left unbelief. It's left doubt. It's left that, oh, God don't work that way. You know, God wants to bless you. He wants you to prosper and be in health. That's what the word says. But you're against being prosperous. You're against being healthy. Why? Because it goes against your self-pity spirit. You like the attention that it's brought you. You like running to the doctor. You like all the tests. You mumble and complain about it, but deep inside it feeds something in you. And I'm going to tell you, when you recognize that's another spirit that's tying up your finances, tying up your time, and robbing you of your joy and your witness of the Lord, and you begin to set your foot down and say, that is enough. I want you out of my life, out of my way, out of me forever, as I am free in Jesus' name. There's another spirit. 
Okay, now, I want to give you a little story here because we've got about eight minutes, seven minutes, and I want to try to wrap this up. In 2 Kings chapter 4, here's how death comes in the camp. This is how death has come into the churches, okay? In 2 Kings uh, chapter 4, i got to read verses 38 through 31. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a drought in the land. There's a drought, a famine. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. So these are sons of the prophets. These are young prophets. And he said unto the, he said, Unto his servant, set on the great pot and seeth pottage for the sons of the prophets. In other words, set up a pot, we're going to feed them. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and he found a wild vine and gathered there out wild gourds, his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. See, they didn't tell him to go get those. They didn't know he was going to get that. He did this in ignorance. So they poured out uh, for the men to eat, and it came to pass, as they were eating of the pottage, they cried out and said, O oh, man of God, and it was amazing how this whole man of God thing fell in the service today. O oh, man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. But he said, bring mail. And he cast it into the pot, and he said, pour out for the people that they may eat, and there was no harm in the pot. This is a spiritual lesson for you. Because let me tell you, when the man of God speaks and says, prepare the table, he's about to feed the people, and somebody runs out of the camp to another place and gets something that the man of God did not call for, and he brings it back it serves as poison in the camp. False doctrines. False teachings. You know, things that are not in the line of the body of Christ that we're in. And we have to be careful. There's nothing wrong with going to services. There's nothing wrong going to revivals. There's nothing wrong with watching other preachers on TV. But you better have discernment as what's being taught to you because you bring it back in the house and it becomes poison to somebody else. It causes them not to walk in deliverance. It causes them not to walk in fullness. It causes them not to walk in what they're supposed to have. Why? Well, what do we do about this, Pastor? Because, see, what God is telling us that we must do is we must have discernment to know what is the word and what is not. What did Elijah do? He didn't say throw out the pot, did he? He said, bring me some meal. Meal represented the food of God, the bread from heaven. And what did he do? He just put it in the pot. In other words, if a doctrine comes in here that's not of God, I'm not going to call you out, point you out out and say that's not true. I'm going to preach you the truth that overrides that doctrine. I'm going to tell you this is what thus saith the Lord. This is what this body of believers is doing for God. And if that isn't fit here, then if you get upset about it and you get an aggressive personality about it, then we know we're dealing with a demon. Amen. Well, that's hard, ain't it? Okay. Now let me show you where this is all going. And I'm going to close. Okay. Because we're dealing with poisonous times. Paul told Timothy in the last days it'll be peerless times. Peerless means dangerous. It means difficult. And right now we're dealing with poisonous doctrines that's creeping into America. They're, they're just doing things in America churches today that are unscriptural. And I'm just going to say it. Okay? They're ordaining homosexuals. They're performing same-sex marriages. They're condoning people living the ways that they shouldn't. They're promoting drinking. They're promoting drug use. They're allowing all kinds of things under the umbrella of the church. Let me tell you something. It's time that men of God stand up and say, this is what's in the pot. It's poisonous to you. And the only thing that's going to save your life that you can eat from is the truth of the word of God. Where are the men of God today? Where are the men of God that will stand on the truth? Isn't it funny? The Bible says for little children, you know, uh, 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 suffer not the little children. A little boy today goes and takes off the, 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 the sword, man of God. Nobody told him to do that. Why did he pick that one when there's like 12 different ones? Because today God wants you to know what it means to be a man of God. And here's what's going to happen. I'm going to close with this verse because I'm trying to wrap this up. 
in Matthew 13. I just want to share this with you, and this is where it's all going. In verse 24, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew 13, I might not have marked it in my Bible. Just give me a second. Matthew 13, I'm going to read 24 uh, through 30. Matthew, Matthew 13, 24, where's it at? Oh, two pages stuck together. And another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, didst thou not sow seed in the field? From whence hath these tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up the wheat with them. Now watch this. Let them both grow together until the harvest. In the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather together first the tares, bind them in the bundles to burn them, and gather the wheat into my barn. What is he saying here? How are you going to tell a wheat from a tear? It's your spiritual personality. And the reapers are the angels. In the time of the harvest, not the end of the world, not the coming of the Lord, in the time of the harvest. Did you catch that? We're going to be a harvest before Jesus returns. In the time of the harvest, Harvest, the reapers, the angels are going to start bundling people. Are we not seeing people bundled today according to their beliefs? They're bundled according to their likeness. They're bundled according to their personalities. And we're about to see the harvest. We're about to see the greatest time I believe the church has ever seen in this, the few days ahead that God is going to send the reapers the angels, to help you and I gather those who have the spiritual personalities that serve him. Thank you guys for joining us on this channel, and we will see you on the next episode. I see.